first, first of all, we have to build a genetic code for these characters. And these beings um, come from the internet, so the genetic code is naturally the internet, which is us. So that is the main connection underneath all of these um, facts. Um, and they generate art using AI and data-driven processes. So, um, so when we talk about AI, we, we have a lot of different subsets that is growing every day from NLP to uh, the, the conversation on AI to um, AI research on medicine and, and health problems. We think there, there is a big um, improvement in how we can build all of these into one system. So if you, if you think about generative models and you have transformer models, how they can talk to each other. So we use a lot of these systems to um, build the content behind these characters. Um, and these uh, auxumens will interact with people. Um, they might not be uh, entirely autonomous in communication at the moment, but that's where um, these, these people will go and they will communicate with, with us the way we communicate with each other. Um, and the life they build will be online as we move more online as people, as our uh, thinking will be extended to the digital life, as it always was extended into the physical world via books and via notes and writing, uh, the, the online world will be an extended version of ourselves and these uh, characters will ultimately be the extension of our thinking as well. And they're A-B tested for what they will become. So that means we always know as the, 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 the sort of community of creators of these people um, how these characters will benefit us and not um, turn into um, tools that previously technology um, uh, could take advantage of in negative ways. Um, so Yona, who you saw um, doing a um, song at the beginning, uh, she was the beginning of this project. Um, and the name was also generated by uh, um, studying a lot of, uh, basically training model on uh, names of characters in animes and, and, and cartoons that Yona turned out, turns out to be one of the anime characters that correlated with a lot of subjects that we were looking for. And the first song that I produced and stitched together using uh, a variety of AI methods was this one, which I can play and explain. So, I can break down uh, a few of the key elements that shaped this song. A year ago, um, I did a hundred tests up until the moment I reached uh, that piece of music which I arranged and produced myself. So, what uh, an AI piece of music right now is, it's either, um, uh, I mean the, the, the most advanced ones, is the transform model where we use um, style, uh, replication and you generate pretty much elevator music because it's a style copying model. Uh, but what I did was to break down what music is as an ontology of what I produce as a producer. So I broke it down and said which tools of AI eventually could fulfill which parts of each uh, production um, and each each song that, that is going to be generated. So. Um, we, I started with the lyrics, with the words, because I needed over the years, I needed a singer. I didn't need to replace myself as a composer or producer. So I, I needed a singer that's going to express, and, and where that comes from is from words, from poetry. Um, there was a case yeah. file built around Yona. I'm not sure, by the way, how much time I have. I have 10 minutes? Yeah, we still have time. Good, that's good. Uh, um, so, the, person, the case file of the personality of, of Fiona was built in, in a certain way that a, a writer would write a character for a fictional film, and you, you just like throw it out there and say, like, oh, this is a person, they like this, they read this type of book, 
they watch this kind of movies, and based on that, you gather data. You know what data you need. So it's not uh, a point where uh, the, the, the computer itself, it has, it has to generate a personality. That's where I start. It might go in the future to the places where it, it generates the personality as well, but that is where it started. And um, the voice techniques that I use over time, I think it took me around 10 years to look into uh, speech engines and how, how can you generate uh, vocals, and voc Vocaloids came out, and that was interesting, but then there was something missing. So in the last couple of years, the advancement with the encoder, decoder architecture helped us clone voices. And what I did and what the team did, we uh, modified that to a melodized version of the neural voice cloning. So you would have a text to singing engine. And um, the melodic value and accuracy is also connected to the personality and the case file that you built that these are the habits of the, the character. And if you use, for example, computational intelligence, which we have used because the mathematical version of the composition is very important, um, that would uh, set the basis of how you melodize vocals, how you melodize the way the, 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 the phonemes work with the text, and how you're gonna uh, use all of these pieces of puzzle that will not sound too odd and resemble some sort of uh, musicality in the end. And the textual sound, which um, uh, I, I, I've been also working on sampling. My music is a collage of the internet almost. I collage sound from everywhere. I use a lot of microtone, uh, microtonal techniques. I um, did something that I call myself um, a nano composition, which is going into the waveforms and looking for the right frequencies that can be harmonized. So that is the method we use at the end to texturize the MIDI that is generated. I'm doing a short version of everything. Um, so a sample of aux voice will set the uh, sort of uh, context for uh, the engine that I was talking about a bit better. The one who loves you sings lonely songs with silence, with silence. The one who loves your smile feels the storm coming through your eyes. Coming through your eyes, if only love. So yeah, you can, you can hear there that uh, there's a lot of expression with words. So over time, we optimize how we stitch these lyrical um, uh, content with the, the, the voice, and where, where are the, t uh, the, the uh, sonic expressions in our voice that doesn't sound like a song. So we, we kind of could make a rule-based system about pop singing. I'm not sure about experimental singing, but I'm sure we can do over time uh, we can build a system around the uh, pop vocals. And one of the examples with the lyrics also, which is for me important, is how um, we can now uh, look into songs using transformer models and build text for this kind of voice. Bye, darling. nonsense, but it makes sense. <laughs> so, I don't know, like songs I've written in the past are actually more of like, I don't know, they're boring as they compare to that. Um, so also, this is very important uh, that I recently, this is the, the most recent thing that we worked on is uh, how to use, you, you can read some of this, but this also doesn't make sense, how we can build conversations uh, putting computers together. So if you have virtual machines that conversate, they can actually uh, use transform models to respond to each other and conversational AI has helped build maybe a community of computers talking to each other. And then we can look at it and say, okay, I, I can now find a good paragraph for a script that I'm writing uh, because I can see them talking and expressing and they pretty much read the internet, they read us, so it can't go wrong, um, at least 80% accuracy in that. Um, and uh, this, is, this is how we, um, as a company, this is how we make sure uh, our data is tested. Like we, we, we look into genres and like build the case files based on the genres that are out there. And s most of them we don't know about, so we scrape the internet for, um, we crawl and see like what's, I don't know what Caucasian folk even means. Um, but yeah. Um, so where, we, where this is going, um, 
for us is something called the Odds World. The Odds World will be a place where these characters will live, and I think it's, it's going to be a new paradigm in experiencing another life form that stems from us. Um, so it's going to be visually generated, uh, uh, generative. Uh, it's going to be uh, with the content is going to be generative. The, the life form is going to be generative, and we, we can curate it as a community of creative people behind it. Where it's, uh, it's the, the the production behind it, if it's the content writing, if it's a question we have, and then we're going to put it in the simulation. And back to why simulation, in my opinion, is very important. Um, if when we use AI, it's not to get um, stuck in the sort of the neural net model uh, and look look at it as a simulation of life rather than a simulation of the brain. And um, hopefully, it's going to look something like this. Um, where we're doing a lot of tests of worlds that we're building and these characters can be experienced there. And the final points I'm going to make is that the internet will make the content of the future, the art of the future. Um, virtual societies uh, now can allow uh, new uh, economics. So I recently saw a company that has built um, virtual um, offices using, uh, I don't know if you heard about it, Tandem, using AI, they, they built an office. So we might not even go to work in the future, and we can just jump into a virtual office. And for sure, this is this is the year in 2019. I think we're uh, completely sure that AI will lead the human-machine paradigm, uh, which is how we eventually become the machine. The machine becomes us. A bit sci-fi still, but I think we're, we're getting there. Everybody gets the idea. Thank you very much. Thank you.